Hello and welcome to Badger Lodge Garage, or welcome back if you've subscribed, which is fantastic. Thank you very much for doing that. On today's video, we're going to be investigating another plight of man, and that is the compulsive purchase on the internet. See, any man who calls himself a man at some point will find himself scrolling the classifieds, be that eBay, Gumtree, or if he's feeling really fruity, Facebook Marketplace. And at some point, he will inevitably part with some money for something that most people would look at and think, no. Why? And I'll tell you why, because it was a really good idea at the time. And that's not just the men now. The ladies are getting in there with the buying the old crap off the internet. And I can stand behind that. Get in there, girls. So inevitably, that's what I found myself doing. And I bought an engine and a gearbox for £100. So join me as we find out if that was really worth it. I can tell you already it wasn't, because I have already taken the rocker cover off this engine and it's it's not good. It's uh, it's fairly it's quite very bad actually. Now those of you who've seen the channel before will be aware that I bought a Reliance Supervan 3. Yes, that was another spontaneous internet purchase. And due to that fact. I've always been concerned that the engine that's in it, having sat in a field for 24 years and been seized, probably isn't long for this earth. I mean, at the moment it runs quite well, but I thought it would be a good idea to get another engine just to have in stock. Uh, and this is what I got. £100 for this and the gearbox. I can tell you now, that was not £100 well spent. So let's get into it. Well, as I'm sure you're aware, every good engine stripped down starts with an angle grinder. Behold, the carnage. We're going to shaky cam for this bit because it's worth a better look. When I said the bottom of the ocean or a pond, I wasn't kidding. I also noticed that we have a completely snapped rocker, which is quite impressive. I mean, I don't know genuinely what somebody has done to this. I presume the valves are stuck in there and someone's tried to turn it over and that's pushed down, snapped off. But personally, I'd have thought that would have uh, broken the... Bro or bent the push rod before then, but um, obviously not. But we'll spin it round and you'll have another look at the other side because you can see where the push rods aren't touching the valves anymore. So I think there's been some monkeying going on. So having spun the engine round, you can now probably see that the push rods are loose, or these two are especially. And um, so what's happened really is no one's had this cover off and someone's tried to spin the engine over. It's pushed these two up and obviously the push rods have dropped back down again once they've carried on and they've stayed down because that's how stuck everything is. And it looks like pushing this valve up onto a stuck, pushing this rocker up, sorry, onto a stuck valve has just sheared the top of that one off, which is quite quite impressive actually. I did think it would have bent the push rod first, but yeah, this is uh, this is what happens sometimes if you don't at least have a little look at your engine before you try and turn it over. It can definitely cause you much more grief. Smell, you, you can smell this, it is. I don't know what someone's been pouring in it. Well, what is it with this socket, honestly? There we go. Well, 
Oh, yes. Look at that. And yes, you can see the stuck valves. Yeah, someone did try and turn this over at some point. Not advisable. Yeah, don't even see, look, these two were springing, these are up. This one's up, down, 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 up, up. So these are stuck. Oh, the smell is disgusting. I mean, oh, it's like a tarmac factory and oh, genuine, I haven't, I don't know. Now, normally you want to take these out and keep them in order, but um, I think it's going to be a new rocker shaft anyway, or at least a rocker. So I might just take them out willy-nilly, because even so, it's not going back together anytime soon. I'll keep them in order for now. And I've never had a spark plug out of this either, but they're not actually tight, so let's have a quick look. Hmm. It's not... Uh, not awful. Which bit's a bit manky, there we go. And that one's got no gap. See that? Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with this, but anyway, let's carry on. What horrors lie beneath in that? Oh, there is a thermostat. Would be a shame if this engine had just died through neglect and living outdoors. Some of you are going to hate me because I'm just going to undo some of these. This engine is in, would have to go to a machine shop and have this head skimmed anyway, so I'm not too concerned about trying to take it to bits too nicely. And I'll tell you what now, this head is going to be stuck on here with great gusto, I mean... And it might not be, but it is. You're meant to work your, you're meant to work your way out from the middle. I know, I know. I've been talking lies in there. I know how to talk ahead, but um, I'm not too concerned about this one anymore. If you catch my drift, so I'm just going to undo all the nuts. We haven't even taken the sump off yet, that's going to be exciting. Don't suppose we've got any lift at all, I'd imagine. Nope. As anticipated. A hammer. Hmm. Well, I knew that was going to happen. No, time for some violence, I think. Oh, we're going to have to make a puller like so many others, possibly. Very likely, to be honest. Oh, I forgot one. That won't help. That no, won't help at all, actually. That's what you get for not cleaning your stuff off. Yes. 
So from that point forth, uh, things escalated somewhat. It's well known that Reliant heads seize to the studs because it's an aluminium head and it's got steel studs running through it. And it's fairly standard practice for you to have to make a puller or at least very gently leave around the edges to encourage it to at least break the seal for it to start moving. Um, simply because they just corrode solid through the head to dissimilar metals. It's quite a, quite a common thing to happen. So I was expecting a bit of a fight to get this head off. Um, and as you can probably tell, it is, it is off. We can probably tell it also didn't come off without a fight. Um, and it was a fight. And it did result in the demise of this engine. Uh, not for want of trying, you must understand. Uh, and I can't show you most of it because there's a lot of hammering and a lot of swearing. So I apologise to those of you who are upset by what I'm going to show you because violence happened. I made a puller. The puller goes on here. You slide it over. You slide it over these and it pushes down on the studs and the idea is it pulls the head off. It actually started bending up these studs and then the thread stripped out the puller. So I thought, oh dear, what to do now? So they do have little points around for you to gently lever, because this is aluminium, so as soon as you start putting any sort of blunt object in it, it's going to just carve chunks out of it. So I did start round this side, and there was no movement whatsoever, and I went round the other side to just try and prise it up. There's three along there, and it just literally broke corner of the piece of casting off and at that point I went and had a beer and then I had two beers and at that point I decided actually this engine is not worth saving if you'll also notice on the back of this head here you might not be able to see from up there I'll show you in a minute corrosion is built up on the inside this is the water jacket it's actually split the back of the block so the block was either going to require welding and I don't know what state the rest of it's in or the block was dead, basically. So I opted for violence. So after I decided that both the head and the block were now not worth saving, I ended up taking off more aluminium because I just drove wedges in here. I had a chisel. I don't know where that's gone either. I've lost that, which I actually broke doing that. Big hammer, not that one. That's a, that's a, uh, ooh. Hammer of a decent size to start with. Clouting wedges into the side because at this point I don't care anymore. That just about started making a gap. Not much of one and it was hard going. I mean I've taken a few cylinder heads off and I've never had a cylinder head this well done in my entire life. It was ridiculous. To the extent that I eventually ended up with this bar, the engine up on one end, hammering this end down into the engine from this end, and then going back around, doing it on the other side, just to eventually get it to move. And this was down hammer blows like this, down like this. You see why there was a lot of swearing. And it was gradually, barely moving, lubing up the studs all the time, cleaning them up and I could barely get it to move. It got to a point where I could get the entire bar in. This is after about an hour and a half of beating the living daylights out of it, where I got up to the thickness of the bar, and I got bored. So I got an angle grinder, because I could see the studs, and just cut through them. And thus, the head came off. It's also not the same day because I couldn't face it. This is this is a couple of days later. A bit hammer happy, as you might be able to tell. Yeah, took a few more chunks off. So, hate me if you will. But these are all still stuck solid in the block. I could have persevered, but there was no real way I was ever going to get this head off with without damaging anything at all. Yeah whether that be just scraping the faces up or 
pulling big chunks off as I have done. But as I said, most things can be saved. I like to go by that rule of thumb. I thought even if this little patch here was knackered, I could cut it out and maybe TIG a bit in. But um, after the fight with the cylinder head, no. I also would like to mention that that's not the end necessarily. There are still plenty of bits on this engine that can be used and may well get put in stock for a, for a rainy day. So we'll keep going and see what else we can find. So moving in on this, you can see what I was on about. It's quite hard to tell, but this here is a, a raised lip. It's actually a bulge in the back of the block. And that is a crack in the water jacket. So that's just corroded over its sitting. And, and that's what sort of condemned this block for me in the first place. But as you can tell, I made it much worse by um, gouging big chunks out of everything. But as I said, a couple of beers and I didn't really care anymore. So there you go. It's still seized, it doesn't turn by the way. The bores are it's probably just stuck from the corrosion down the uh, down the cylinders there, but um as you can see it was dirty grimy on the inside. This engine's definitely sat outdoors, I think, and that's what's that's what's done for it. When I took the rocker cover off, I had a feeling that um, it wasn't going to be good. But I haven't taken the sump plug out to see if there's anything in there yet, so we might do that. See what carnage awaits down here. And there you go, see there's the what's left of the cylinder head after the beating it's had by me. But it started with one of these just breaking off. They have these um, points just slightly raised out where you can there's a gap underneath you can lever it. I tried it on one of those and it just broke the first one of these off. So um, that was that really. But anyway, let's take the sump plug out, go to the other end of the engine and see what comes out of there. So I've got a drip tray underneath, see what comes out. What's your betting? Water, sludge. Nothing. Nothing. There you go. That was disappointing. I mean, I did have it on end, so it could all be in the wrong place at the moment. But still, if there is anything, there's not much. Mmm. So let's take the oil, uh, let's take the sump off and see what exciting stuff's under here. Okay. See if the bottom end's as bad as the top end. Oh, gold, yes, it is. Oh yeah, that's violent. Oh. Lummy. And you can see that. That is thick. Emulsified gunge with heaps of metal. I mean loads of it. And that's not from me taking the top off. This is old stuff. This is gritty as well. You can feel it. I think this engine is complete junk. I mean, it's thick. Look at it. Oh, by the way, you should be wearing gloves doing this as well, because working with old oil and stuff is fairly uh, known to be carcinogenic. So don't do what I'm doing here. Come and have a look in here. This is quite good. Well, it's not. 
So I don't know how well you can see the mud fest in here, but that's that's what it is. It is disgustingly awful. Look at this. The slime. Definitely uh, one of the worst engines I've ever seen. This is the oil pump. <sighs> it's not seas, but it's also full of metal flakes. It's quite amazing. Feels quite nice though. That might uh, be worth stripping down a bit further and checking the gears. I'd like to ideally just get down and take the bearing caps off because I'm interested to see if it ran as sludgy as this or whether it, uh, whether it is all just sitting. But judging by the amount of gunge in there, I'd say it it ran, it ran and it died. Probably with no oil by the looks of it. There's nothing in this engine that isn't stuck. This should just slide off these. I don't know if you can see the mud basically that's been underneath all of this. There we go. Lord. So at the moment we've all been waiting for, let's take a bearing cap off. Take the one in the middle off because that's easiest to get to. And here we go again. I'll tell you one thing, your bearing cap should normally just lift off, which this isn't doing. Same as everything else in the engine I should have known really, never mind. Well, bugger me, honestly. So I just spent too long trying to get that centre cap off. Bearing in mind it should just slide out. It didn't. Half an hour and it's still not coming off. So I moved on to this one, which is begrudgingly lifting up out of the way. This put up a bit of a fight as well, but not quite as much as that sense gap. Nothing in this engine is any good, is what I'm getting from this. Like the bottom of a swamp on the inside of an engine, to be honest. Yep. Much surface left on that. Don't know if you can see that on camera, it's quite well scored as well, and that's just the the bearing cap. Crank itself is very finely scored actually. It's not awful, but it's not how it's meant to be either. So yes, tired I think. So being that this video is now far too long and probably not particularly interesting, 
I'm going to leave it at that. I've managed to get one bearing cap off in half an hour. That one is just held on by magic, I think, or more likely neglect. But what we can safely say is £100 was not well spent. I called it at the beginning and unfortunately I was proven drastically right. It's taken me an awful long time to get a cylinder head off and then thinking taking a bearing cap off would be fairly straightforward wasn't. Everything's full of this fine paste. It is knackered. So we are going to leave it there. Thank you for watching if you were vaguely interested. But I'm going to stop at this point because I can't face any more, basically. But if you were interested, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in a hopefully more interesting future video. Thanks very much.